The town of Warwick in the heart of England. I actually grew up near here and let me tell you, it is absolutely dripping in history. From its famous castle to the market square, everywhere you look, there it is. Small wonder then that it's poured over by historians, amateur and pro alike, who all try to take these visual clues and reconjure the stories that happened here in the past. But today I've been asked to help with an historical mystery deep underground, through this very small hole through which the fire brigade are going to winch me. So, oh my goodness. It is. Oh my goodness, okay. Sorry, did you say you were afraid? Afraid of what? I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not brilliant with uh, enclosed spaces, shall we say, but, um, you yeah. know. You didn't mention that before. Well, you? well, you sort of didn't mention it was like this small, that's why. <laughs> Under here, going metres down, there's a well which near the bottom has an entrance to an unexpected and unexplained tunnel. One which some think could be part of a wider network of tunnels under Warwick streets. There have always been whispers around here about the existence of tunnels, but just how many are there and what were they used for? It's these questions which have hooked the Harvey brothers. It's like a little puzzle. It's like a puzzle with bricks in and rocks in and a well and there's a lot of people in Warwick like just want to talk about tunnels and never really want to investigate. They prefer to have the myth. So I don't want to have the myth, I want to know the fact. Alex and Joe bring more than their passion to this quest though. They also run a VR company called River and they think VR can help figure out why this tunnel is here. The fire brigade can't always be on hand and so today, after my safety briefing, I will be helping capture images from the tunnel to build up a photogrammetric 3D model of it. I'm in good hands, but Sorry, why, why? Why? at the end of the day, you are being winched down a very small hole. Okay. Oh, there we go. All right. see on the sides of these tunnels the hack marks which are obviously from when it was made no one really knows when that was uh, but you just get a sense that it must have been hundreds of years ago it really is very tight but the fire brigade are a reassuring presence they'll pump air down here to keep it safe and wow it really is something imagine the effort it took to hack through all this sandstone you know whoever made these tunnels really wanted to do it um, but nobody knows what they were for. This is the section I'm to take images of. It's really hard to pick up but on the ceiling someone has used a burning candle to graffiti their name. 20 meters down the tunnel it's blocked by rubble. It's so frustrating. Just what lies beyond. Some think it may lead to the church crypt just 100 meters away but one local historian thinks there may have been a more prosaic use for it. I think we'd all like to believe and we'd all like to imagine that these are, are secret tunnels that connect a kind of, a kind of murky underworld of, of residents from times gone by. I think the reality is traditionally that tunnels that have been discovered in and around Warwick have had a very functional purpose and that's principally as culverts to move waste, to move water out of the town, out of the roads, out of houses uh, into, into wells and into waste. Whoa. <laughs> you know, you still get the feeling, I think, don't you? The next day, I'm checking out my work at the VR studio. It really does feel like I'm back underground. It's a very lifelike experience. And there's that graffiti we couldn't see yesterday. And you can see on the roof here, the, the graffiti was made by candlelight. It says, O Tibbets. 1894. Could this really just be a waste tunnel? Well, our historian has never been down himself, but now it's been scanned, he can. Aaron, what do you make of it? Yeah, so my first impressions really of seeing it is, is of course, the two different types of uh, construction in here. I find it quite interesting. Of course, up above, we've got this red brick. You know, large parts of Warwick were completely gutted by fire in 1694, 95. So, you know, this would certainly correlate to, to this um, being built maybe when uh, the houses up above were, were demolished and rebuilt after the fire. Of course, what really interests me is, is down below this uh, sandstone tunnel, because this looks like it's been really carved quite aggressively and quite vigorously into the rock. 
Oh, and if this is just a waste tunnel, uh, why is it so big? You know what, it's a very, very good question. I mean, my, my instinct before uh, coming down here was that it was carved quite large, because of course people would be coming down here, you know, so they're not gonna kind of crawl around carving. They'll need space to really kind of chip in. It's far larger than I had expected, and I think that does question whether this was solely, and indeed originally, only for, for waste. So the mystery continues, but the Harvey brothers are in this for the long game. So I see this project going on quite a long time. Um, I feel like I couldn't really put it to bed until we've scanned the whole of Warwick, above and below ground. Um, it's fascinating seeing the correlation, for me, fascinating when I see the models where you see the tunnel underneath the ground and now we can determine where the buildings on top of ground are in relation to the below ground. Alex and Joe are already using their VR tunnel to bring history alive for local school children. Still, for some, VR can never quite beat the real thing. That is a tourist attraction, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I can see people doing that. There you go. Anyway, that's it from us for this week. As ever, you can find the team on social media on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter at BBC Click. Thanks for watching. Class dismissed. Bye-bye. <laughs>